Good afternoon. This is Robin Harvey, Chair of the Building and Contracts Committee. I now call the meeting to order for Monday, April 15, 2024. In accordance with Board Policy 8311, the Chair of a Committee, at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison, may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. In order to conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Additionally, as a courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Ms. Faye or myself if you must leave uh, the call by using the Teams chat feature so that a quorum can be maintained. Ms. Faye, will you please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum? Thank you, Ms. Harvey. Ms. Hen? Present. Mr. McMillan? Present. Ms. Harvey? Present. Ms. Harvey, there are three. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Faye, will you now please call the roll of staff members participating in today's meeting? Thank you. Mr. Augusto? <clears throat> Present. Dr. DiDonato? Present. Dr. Grimm? Present. Mr. Hartlove? Here. Ms. Margaret Ann Howie? Mr. Pete Dixit? Present. Dr. April Lewis? Present. Ms. Allison Myers? Present. Ms. Amajala? Present. Ms. Megan Shea? Present. Ms. Fisher? Present. Mr. Bertazon? Present. Thank you. If there are additional staff participating that were not mentioned, please state your name now. Thank you, Ms. Harvey. Thank you. Okay, we're going to jump right into our first contract, and for that, I call on Mr. Hartlow. Sure. Uh, first contract is GDA-308-24 Board Certified Behavioral Behavior Analyst Consultative and Direct Services. Uh, this is a new contract for five years that expires April 30th, 2029. Con this contract will provide direct and consultative services from board certified behavioral analysts to students with uh, significant and intense behavioral and instructional needs, including students diagnosed with autism. Um, and the con the maximum contract spending authority for this contract is one million two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed with contract two, Mr. Hartlow. Yes, LKO-423-19 interpreting services for deaf and hard of hearing individuals. Um, this is uh, this contract modification will provide for continued interpreting services for deaf and hard of hearing individuals. Um, approval is requested to extend the contract for five months and increase contract spending authority by $250,000, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $3,450,000. And the new date, uh, the contract end date would be uh, extended out to October 31st, 2024. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed to the next contract, Mr. Hartlove. Yes, KSH-313-19, Cosmetology Supplies. Um, this is, uh, um, approval is requested to extend the contract for six months, which would take the uh, contract end date out to not, uh, September 30th, 2024. There are no, uh, there's no change to the maximum contract spending authority. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll move to the next contract. Mr. Hartlove. JVO-734-18 Music Studio Spotlight on Music. 
approval is requested to extend the contract for two years and increase contract sp spending authority by three hundred and eighty thousand dollars, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to one million seven seven hundred ninety seven thousand six hundred sixty three dollars. And the uh, extension would be through August 31st, 2026. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll move to the next contract, Mr. Hartlow. OK, contract 5 NTA-509-24 Music Instruments Supplies and Materials. This is a new contract. It's a five year uh, a contract that would take us through April 30th, 2029. The contract will provide for the purchase of instructional materials needed to implement the BCPS music curriculum in grades pre-k through 12. Um, this will allow us to maintain instrument libraries based on enrollment to meet the needs of expansion of middle uh, school guitar eight music and uh, audio technology and revisions to the mu the general music curriculum the uh, maximum contract spending authority for uh, this item is three million dollars are there any questions Hearing none, we'll proceed to the next contract, Mr. Hartlow. JH0, I'm sorry, JHO-700-24, Technology Solutions, Products and Services. Um, the uh, This contract will provide open gate weapons detection system and training for use primarily uh, during athletic events events approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by eight hundred and sixty thousand seven hundred four dollars bringing the revised total contract spending authority to three million five hundred twenty three thousand seven hundred and four dollars are there any questions uh, just so i'm clear mr hartlove this is expanding our current use of the open detection system to uh, extracurricular activities and athletic events? That is my understanding correct. It's already in place, but now we're expanding out to the athletic events. Okay, Next great. Time, uh, excuse me. Are there is, other questions? I'm sorry. Yes, this is Dr. Lewis with, uh, with the correction there. This is a different system. It is not the one that's currently being used in our buildings. This is a standalone a weapons detection system for use with our athletic events. Okay, when you say standalone, can you explain that a little bit? Is there something different about this system or is there some capability with this system that's different from what we use that's required for athletic, for those types of events? We don't currently have a system that we're using for athletic events. The system that we currently have um, is the one being implemented, the um, OmniLert uh, system, which Correct. uses our existing camera systems. The open gate system um, is like a metal detector. So it's something that we would use at the entrances to our athletic events and people entering the events would be scanned as they walk through. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Are there any other questions? Hearing none, we'll move to the next contract, Mr. Hartlow. Yes, uh, JBO-715-19 Statewide Foreign Language Interpretation and Translation Services. Um, this contract modification will provide for the continued foreign language interpretation and translation services uh, for several uh, departments. Um, the uh, approval is requested to extend the contract for one year uh, four months and increase contract to spending contract spending authority by four hundred and eighty seven thousand bringing the revised total contract spending authority to two million two hundred and nine thousand and this would also extend out the um the date to august 31st 2025. are there any questions hearing none we will proceed to the next contract 
CWA-118-24 Technology Products, Services, and Solutions. This is a new contract for four years, six months. That takes us through October 31st, 2028. Contract. This contract provides alternate, alternate vendors and manufacturers to support routine and urgent repairs and standard and non-standard equipment. The um, maximum contract spending authority uh, for this item is $1 million. Are there any questions? A hearing none, we'll move to the next contract, Mr. Hartless. The another new contract NGO-410-24 trade reference and mass market books. Uh, this is a, this is a uh, five year contract that would take us through April 30th, 2029. This contract will provide trade reference and mass market books for all schools and offices. Um, there they'll be used to support staff development and provide reference materials for professional library. Uh, libraries contract may also be used to purchase replacements of previously approved mass market titles for student use. Excuse me. Um, the maximum contract spending authority is one million two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Are there any questions? Uh, hearing none, we will proceed to the next contract. And for that, I call on Mr. Dixon. So good afternoon. The next contract is GDA. Dash 322 dash 21 for bottled water delivery. The request is to extend the contract for six months and increase contract spending authority by $500,000. Are there any questions? I'm sorry, I'm just looking through uh, Mr. Dixit because I thought one. OK, if there are no questions, uh, we'll move to the next contract. Mr. Dixit. Next contract is LKO-402-20 for grounds maintenance equipment. And the request is to increase contract spending as already by four hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars to to the total of two million four hundred and fifty thousand dollars with eight awarded contractors. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed to the next contract, Mr. Dixon. The next contract is JBO-716-19, Purchase of Relocating Classrooms. Uh, the request is to increase the request to $5 million from $6,266,068 to a total of $11,266,068. And I just want to provide a little bit of background. It's a large amount. This request is uh, to accommodate the purchase of two modular buildings to support Towson High School's addition and renovation project. Are there any questions? Uh, just from my knowledge, Mr. Dixit, you said the reason why the cost of this is is so uh, is high is because we're supporting uh, Towson High with modular buildings. So these That's aren't our normal, like it's that, not a classroom, it's a building. That's right. Modular is combination of several relocatable buildings put together and it, it's slightly different design and they cost more when you have, typically they have 16 to 18 classroom and they also have restrooms in those buildings. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed to the uh, next contract. Mr. Dixit. The next contract is DEI 608-24, 
and this is for building renovation and repair services. Uh, this is what we uh, what the board is aware of is a jock contract, and this will cover the initial eight month term of the contract, and and then we'll come back to you. Uh, with uh, additional term and additional dollars. The total amount is $5 million, and this is also going to provide additional contractors uh, in addition to the other job contract that we have. Uh, and the reason behind all of this is large number of projects that have to be done uh, in quicker, quick turnaround time and have been approved in most of the cases through grant funding. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed to the next contract. Mr. Dixit. The next contract, CWA, I want to make sure I got the right number here, CWA-109-24, and this is for Owings Mills High School Auditorium Stage Lighting and Sound System Upgrade. The project is funded under aging school program, and there has been a request to modernize that system from the community and from school administration. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed to the next contract. Mr. Dixon. So next is a series of five contracts for the addition at uh, Dundalk High School that board has already approved. Um, today we are here to request approval for five packages for construction um, in different trades. And in the interest of time like I normally do, I'll share the name of the trade package, amount, number of bidders, and the name of the lowest bidder. So all of the contracts are number GDA-306-24, the first package is 01A for general trades, amount including 10% contingency is $3,776,300. There were four bidders for this contract and the lowest bidder is William F. Klingensmith. The second package is Package 01B, which is for testing and inspection. The amount, including 10% contingency, is $329,589. There were three bidders, and the lowest bidder is Ruling Associate Incorporated. The third package is Package 05A, which is for steel, and amount, including contingency, is $3,630,000. There is only one bidder, and the bidder's name is S.A. Halak Iron Works Incorporated. The fourth package is package 26A. This is for the electrical, and it include, including contingency, the amount is $3,573,735. There were three bidders for this contract, and the lowest bidder is Key Systems Incorporated. The final package for today is package 32A for site works and utilities. Amount including contingency is $3,665,749. There's only one bidder for that, and the name is Urban and Sink Contractor Incorporated. We are requesting approval of these five packages today, and we'll come back later on for additional packages in the next board meeting. Uh, thank you, Mr. Dixit. Before we move to discussion, I wanted to confirm that board member Mr. Young is on the call. Mr. Young? I am present. Great, thank you. Ms. Faye, can you please record Mr. Young's presence? Is there any discussion on the packages for Dundalk High School's uh, addition. I have one, Ms. Harvey. Oh, please proceed, Mr. McMillian. Mr. Pete, I was, it, it appears to me that 
that in each of those cases, the same number of people requested the bid. There was a hundred, the number 149, and it ranged from people actually submitting the bids from one to four. Is that accurate? It just that- struck me as strange that 149 people in each case, 149 businesses submitted or, or requested the information. Well, that's the information I have. This is really a procurement question. So um, whoever is representing procurement today uh, perhaps can answer better than I can. Yes, uh, Mr. Uh, Bertizen. Uh, yes. OK, thank you. Okay. Be Jump happy back. to speak to that. Um, the number of vendors, 149, as each of these are packages, um, they're, so they're a part of the entire bid. So at this point in time, we have 149 companies that have expressed interest in this project. So total of all the different packages, it's not broken down the number of people because they don't request just a particular package. They are requesting documents Uh, drawings for the entire project. And that's why the entire, the number is consistent and constant. Okay, thank you. That makes sense. Thank you. Certainly. Thank you. Are there any additional questions? Uh, So thank you, Mr. Dixit and Mr. Hartlove and the BCPS team for providing that information on these contracts. I will now entertain a motion to recommend that items 1 through 19 be moved to the full board for approval. So moved, Young. Thank you, Mr. Young. Is there a second? I'm sorry, I was muted. Second, McMillian. Thank you, sir. Ms. Faye, will you please call the roll? Thank you, Ms. Harvey. Mr. Young? Yes. Ms. Han? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Harvey? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Being for an aff- affirmative, the motion passes. Contracts 1 through 19 will be moved forward to the full board. The next item on the agenda is announcement. The next Building and Contracts Committee meeting will be held on Monday, May 6, 2024 at 5 p.m. Is there any further business? I do have uh, one uh, point of business for us to conduct as a committee. As you know, the chair has asked us to do some evaluation of our committee so that we're clear on our purpose and effectiveness. So if we could just have a brief discussion on uh, how we are seeing the role of the Building and Contracts Committee in our purpose, uh, that would be good. And then talk about uh, briefly how, how we are assessing the effectiveness of the committee. Ms. Harvey, would you like to have that discussion today or are you teeing us up to have it at our next meeting? I would like to have it today. Uh, if, if the committee would like to defer it to the next meeting, I am open to that. I would prefer to defer, Ms. Harvey. Is there any other input from other committee members? Ms. Harvey, I'd like to say that I know Mr. Burns talked a lot about policy. You know, the, the board's actions are driven by policy. And as chairman of the audit committee, I know that there's numerous policies written to, to for lack of a better word, defend the, the existence of the audit committee. 
I'm assuming there has to be policy written about the Building and Contracts Committee, correct? I, I, I do not believe there's a specific policy um, written regarding the committee, but I would need to do further research on that. Do other board members have any information to, to impart regarding Mr. McMillian's question? And, and back to the policy, if there's no policy, you know, I feel strongly that, that this committee is extremely valuable by giving the board members the opportunity to, you know, look at these contracts in an in-depth manner. If there's no policy to justify this committee, I recommend that that we try to, you know, we go back to the policy review committee and and try to construct some policy that defends the existence of this committee. Thank you for your feedback, Mr. McMillian. Do we have other comments at this time? Okay, hearing none, I will defer the full conversation to the uh, next meeting. I will provide uh, the feedback that we have received thus far. And uh, so, um, if there's no further discussion, uh, I will adjourn the meeting. Thank you so much, everyone, and have a good evening. Thank you very much. Thank you.